I'm going to review the Hoishreka 4B, also known as Grasshopper. Um, this is essentially a very rare, at least in real life it was, um, Panzer IV variant with a 105 in the turret, which was removable as like a semi-mobile strong point thing. It was a terrible idea, I guess. Um, there was a few different types of prototypes of of this that were made, and then there was the uh, that kid I've already reviewed that Delps Father Feta, uh, what is it, 4B, which is essentially a six-wheeled version of this that you can't remove. Um, so yeah, there is this one, which is kit number 6439, which came out in 2007. You can call it an initial tooling because I think the, the majority of, of hull and the turret will be, but it's going to have your standard Panzer IV smart kit suspension and stuff, or at least the by the look of this drive sprocket, the Panzer III IV, so the Nashorn stuff. Um, there's a trumpeter version of this thing as well, which I haven't seen, and I can't really speak to which is more accurate um, or better. I know there's some stuff about this one that people have complained about, that, is, that I could find anyway, like it should be able to tow the turret, and I don't think that's an option. Um, but it's... I feel like it's an ugly duckling of kits. I see it all the time sitting on a shelf, like at a local store, because it goes for, you know, modern-ish prices, so I think the one in, in Madison where I am is like 65. It's like the sticker on it, and every time I look at it, I'm like, <laughs> no. Like, even, I don't even like... I never considered it. I found this on eBay, I swear, for, I think it was 20 bucks. So, like, with six shipping or something, it was very cheap. So, if, I didn't even want to get it uh, until I just saw it, like, dumb cheap, and I was like, okay, fine, I'll get it. So, let's have a look at what's going on. It's only got a prototype paint scheme, uh, and that's all there is there. Now, the turret is removable and it's going to have a lot in it because it's an open top type turret so it's going to be well it does have a trailer that's adorable um it's going to have a lot going on in it sort of like m more akin to things like you know open compartment vehicles than a tank that hull looks huge so there's some options for ways to do it. I mean, I can't, I can't even imagine having something that looks like this sitting on a shelf. It's so silly. It's got some Gen 2 stuff in there, I'm assuming, uh, to go with the inside of the compartment. There's some interior stuff, which I don't usually see in Panzer IVs. And then Magic Track, thankfully. Before I dig into uh, everything. I had just opened this to, like, I pre-open everything. And I want to show what it, how it's packaged, because it's actually kind of strange. Um, so you've got some things individual, which is what I, we all kind of prefer, because it's safer for them. And then some things doubled, which happens. And there's actually quite a bit in there. But then there was this, and I'm I'm not used to seeing this. This is like what other companies do. It's a large shrink wrapped bag. This is kind of odd. I don't. If, if nothing else in here is wrapped at all, I'll be very annoyed. If it's individually wrapped within it, I'll just be confused because that's just that's different. So the instructions, I will go through quickly. Um, it's funny. The more Dragon gets you, you start to recognize spruces by their shapes. That's a Stug G gun sprue. Because I'm building one right now and I recognize that thing. It's interesting that that's there. And the whole, whole gun assembly is not used. Moving on. There we go. Okay. So. Two variants of Panzer III Sprocket and Panzer IV Idler, the welded type, so it is exactly like an asshorn with the Panzer III IV suspension. Turn rollers and wheels, the simplified bogies, not, not the most, there's actually a simpler version, I think, of these bogies. 
Uh, already we're putting in a floor, which I'm not, I haven't done on a Panzer IV before. And a firewall as well, right there. Interesting. Uh, the simpler of the, the idler adjusters, and then I can't tell you what that is. That must be something very specific to this thing. So, bump stops and return rollers. Fenders. That's interesting. You have to put that little thing on yourself in the bottom. There's not a lot. Guess we're already putting the upper hull on. This has interesting exhaust. Almost like late Panzer IV, but kind of like a Panther. Like a Panther A? Or D, rather, sorry. And there's some options here as well. <laughs> It says early and late production. I think what it means is like prototype one versus prototype two. Not a lot of steps in this thing. All right. So there's the glacis and bow plate. Some bizarre looking hatches for a Panzer IV. It's weird because it's like it's a Panzer IV, but it totally isn't. Ah, uh, there's some etch for the back. It looks like grills, and then these monstrous winch wheels, or rather, um, that's what I always thought they were. They're for the trailer. Separate rubbers, perhaps, here? And then some kind of monstrous photo etch thing going on there. I can't even tell what that thing is supposed to be. It's such a bizarre vehicle. Multi-part jack. And this, these are awfully large on the page. Okay. Spare tracks, and they do have PE uh, little holders. I don't like, sometimes they just have you glue spare tracks on, on nothing. You just set them there. I've seen Tamiya do it. Kind of annoys me. I want there to be something to indicate that they're being held there. I'm sure they could weld them on or something, but that you wouldn't be able to use them as tracks, and that'd be stupid. I'm noticing a lot of little PE callouts, though. MA-25, MA-15, like... Alright, moving on, we got headlight conduit is attached. It's having you cut off the part that dips down, which means this, this could be for another vehicle initially. And they've just sort of figured out how to fit it on here. It seems like the lower hull is primarily done, and then there's this, this assembly that will then be put up here. Uh, is... oh, that's what these things are. So these are like supports for something to do with this large thing that goes, that moves along the crane. Okay. Now this is the breech for the gun. All of this is. Looks about tolerably complicated, not so much that I feel like it's over-engineered, but enough that it'll look pretty sweet. So it looks pretty familiar to me, honestly. That looks like a radio. Now we're finally getting to the turret bit and putting the gun in there. Step 17 now. There's the 105. That's this almost T-34 or KV, more so, looking mantlet. It's a strange mantlet for a German tank. Not a ton of stuff going on there. Some little annoying hatch stuff. Then this is the frame for the trailer. This could be an option of... That's weird. This side up. How to do this? I don't think you'd need to do this if you're not going to do that. So like this would be the other option. You're just putting it on there. Even the antennas at the rear. There's just so many strange things about this. And then the only marking option is 
Uh, doesn't even say. It's just yellow. In the box, we will start with our 40 centimeter. This is when you can't even tell if they're hollow or solid guide or. Come on. Hollow. Which looks better. They had both types, but since these are harder to make, I'm always impressed with those. So basically, later, wider Panzer III 4 tracks. Um, there's really not a whole lot to say about these. They're on everything, like, well, Panzer III fours anyway. There's a set being painted right next to me because they're everywhere. At least here. Dragon card. A little bit on the light side, which is fine. I don't always need tons of stuff. Markings are about as simple as it gets. That's all there is. Um, and then you've got the clear periscopes, a relatively, well, I, would, I won't say large, we'll say medium-sized PE sheets. Those bizarre grills for the back, a bunch of stuff I don't recognize. Spacers for that crane assembly. And then here as well is the main turret. Um, let me pop it out real quick. did not think to do that. I know, plastic noise. Okay. So it's it's bordering on razor edge thinness. It's pretty thin. There's some objector pin marks up on the top surface of it, but not anywhere else on the interior, because you will be able to see in it. But the only surface it's on is underneath here, so it'll be pretty hard to see. The surface is nice, it's thin, it's straight, it's not warped. I like it. Now, I noticed once I opened that massive bag, they were all individually wrapped inside that bag. Uh, and everything seems very well um, taken care of, nothing's warped really so far as I can tell yet. And I've noticed that a ton of these sprues are originally tooled for this, like half at least, which is awesome because that's not very common. So this guy, we've got some decent texture on the fenders, anti-slip if you will. The fenders overall look pretty good. Also, the textures in the bottom. Pretty well detailed on the bottom there. And we're going to have a lot of weird Hoistreka type bits. This has something to do with the frame of that crane. That's a rear mud flap. That's the front plate. Rivets look good. Yeah, the parts are very, very nice. Very strange. Uh, one of the things that's not um, originally tooled for this would be this. Your default Panzer IV A sprue of suspension parts. And, as I do, I will just look at how clean and flashy they are as this thing has been made a million times. The wheels look good. The bogies seem fine. Idler adjusters seem okay. Everything seems to not be completely gross yet. I mean, this is from 07, so if it was actually manufactured then, this in theory would still be in good shape. It just seems that way. This is the Hoishreka gun sprue, which is one of those weird sprues that doesn't like to sit on the ground at all. It's got weird pegs like that. I'd seen this before in the uh, Sturmhaubitze 
42. Because it's the only 105 howitzer I think they had of a modern tool. So I got this in my Stug uh, howitzer variant. So I've got an extra sprue of this in case anything goes wrong, although I'll be using the barrel and the brake on the Stug. Now it's interesting because in that Stug kit, they use the breech of the Stug. There were some kind of complaints about that, but apparently they do that in this kit as well. That's mighty thin right there. There's the gun. Interesting how the brake is already, at least the first part, normally it's a three part. And then this would be separate, but this is already molded on, and that looks good for me. There's the sleeve, some more really thin stuff. The seat, the bottom of the turret. That bizarre, bizarre turret. It's got the teeth in it. There's some of the breech assembly. We got two of these, which is tooled for this called the D sprue. Now this has these two separate rubber bits to go on this tire. It's an interesting way of doing it. I kind of dig it. Those will more than likely on mine just be mounted on the rear. I don't want this thing sitting on a trailer. There's some pretty nice ammo right there. Looks like separate rounds and powder charges. As is an artillery piece. There's a little stowage thing for ammo. Not sure what that is. It's a pretty big hatch, if that's a hatch. You got some really strange parts right there. Uh, some real little stuff. All this is very up to modern standards. That looks really familiar. Nashorn has a hatch very similar to that shape. Got some what look like stowage boxes. Some strange exhaust pipes. Boy, those are weird. MP40. Radio. I'm guessing that's for spare tracks or something. Yeah, everything on there looks great. This guy, again, tooled for the kit, sea sprue. Here's our large upper hull, sort of front upper hull, which most modern dragon kits do it that way. And then you'll have the engine deck as a separate piece, which is right there. Which looks Panzer IV-y, but not completely. That's bizarre. What? Oh, okay, this is probably... Normally when I see a piece like this, it's a, it covers the like drive shaft. But like this thing? I don't know. That's new to me. Some larger pieces on here. There's your idler adjusters. It's a nice detail in right there. I don't know how much that's visible if the turret's on. I assume none. Not as much on there, but again, very, very good looking. So there, as I called out, is a Stug 3G welded mantlet gun sprue, which I just recently had to pillage one of my spares of this anyway because I lost this little guy on my Stug build. So what's cool about this is they'll be using like these pieces here, and then I get a spare slide molded pack 40, which in case I ever build anything, Tamiya or something, I'll have a nice barrel for it. I don't mind plastic barrels at all. I think they're cool. So you don't use it, not all of it, but there's that sprue. Which came out around the same time, I think, 07 is when they initially tooled this thing. Got a little fella right here. 
There's the light thing with the conduit. Some tools like the towing bits and the fire extinguisher. And to dress up the inside of the thing, you get, and I have lots of these, what do they call it? 135th German gear. So, just spare bits, helmets and knives and canteens and stuff. Actually, that one, of all the sprues in here, is a little warped. Unfortunate. We've got two of these. These are sprockets. Interesting type. Final drive. So these are Panzer IV sprockets. So we're not going to use them. But I'm assuming there's some suspension elements that we do need. These are like caps for the wheels, return rollers. That's actually part of the sprocket itself. Armored covers for Panzer IV final drives. And bump stops. Looks very good, but I don't think we use much of it. Another little guy. Nice tools with clamps. Axe, cutters, crowbars, shovel. These are my particularly favorite type of tools. I don't like doing etch clamps because I'm afraid of them. Because <laughs> they tend to ping onto my floor. And I don't like the old crappy ones without these little open holes, so these are what I like to see. This we will be using, and there's two of these as well, which comes with all the Nashorns I've seen. The Nashorn Hummel A sort of drive sprocket sprue. So these are essentially just Panzer III sprockets, both types early and late. And then a Panzer III final drive. These! I did not realize I had spares of these. These you put all over NAS horns and they tend to crumble. And I had to use a different type um, on my NAS horn build. I didn't realize I had a whole sprue full of them. I wonder if they're spares. But yeah, everything on here looks up to what I would expect it to look like. Clean, not flashy. Very good. And we got a little triple G sprue. I see this guy a lot lately. So he is more tools with clamps. And I like this guy, just the spare clamp. Uh, our multi-part jack and our tools with clamps again. More stuff with clamps. Love it. Different axes with different configurations of them. Yep. If they're spares, they can upgrade Tamiya stuff real quick. I don't get much of that stuff anymore, but... Then we got these very strange, oops, very strange pieces. From a tiny little bag, which are parts of that trailer. Basically, they're like girder. I don't know how to describe what sort of metal piece that is, but they look very, very crisp on the corners, like very tight corners. They're not spongy at all. Shaky if I hold them that way. Look good. And the only thing left is this hull, which is frickin' massively tall. I don't think I have a Panzer IV hull handy, but they're not this tall normally. Not by miles. I mean, that is crazy. Even the, like that standard Panzer III IV hull, the Nashorn hull is different. Longer 
and just not this tall overall. I think it has a... Yeah, I don't know. I don't have one handy. So, but that's a bizarre looking hull. It seems like it's the... The armored parts here are the same standard length of a Panzer IV. But it kind of shoots out farther towards the front. But it's definitely... Definitely taller. But it's not warped. The return roller stations and sorry, all this stuff is a uh, very good. So I'd never looked in this box before, and I'm actually pretty impressed with what's in there. It's a lot of original stuff and that is important to me for whatever reason. And it may be a weirdo vehicle that was a terrible idea, but I mean, now I'm kind of excited to build a thing. Uh, that's one of the reasons I do these, by the way, is that a lot of times I buy these things um, and I just file them away, apparently, without ever even looking at them, which I didn't even realize I hadn't looked at this, which is funny to me. I think I looked at the instructions, I never looked at the kit. Um, so, you know, there's two reasons. One, people seem to like reviews. I did when I was not making videos but watching them, so I make things that I also liked. And then two, I do this because it gives me the opportunity to, maybe I don't have time to build, but I have time to look at something a little closer and kind of impressed. However, do not pay store price for this thing. 65 is stupid. Um, it, it isn't, from what I can tell, isn't selling that well, so just stock it if you want it. And you should be able to find it as cheap as they go, you know, 30, 35 bucks maybe. So there, I, I like it. 